Okay, I'm going to show you how to implement the script uh, for the content slider on your SharePoint sites that uses this slider called Unslider. Uh, you're looking at it here on the screen now. It's located at unslider.com. Go ahead and check it out. It's got some cool features, seems to be really lightweight, uh, and it seems to work great in SharePoint too. Um, here you can see the slider actually working on my SharePoint 2010 site, and it's actually pulling uh, data from a SharePoint list here. And for the rest of this video, we're going to implement this slider in my SharePoint 2013 site, which is on Office 365. So if we first go look at my sites in Office 365, you see that we have a list called Slider. And if we go and we look at the list settings for this list, you see the list slider has a couple of key fields. It's got an HTML field, which is multiple lines of text. Uh, it's going to be rich HTML. And then we have a picture field, which is a hyperlink or picture field used as a picture. So that is how we get the content for our slide. The HTML is going to be what you see in the slide, and the picture field is going to be used for a background image. If we go back and look at what we have in the slide, you see we have uh, some rich text here. So you can see you can even insert images uh, in the rich text box. And then I got a picture that I'm using for my background. Um, and here I have a slide that has no background at all. So the background is actually optional. So now we have to use the script that we have from the blog. So if we look at SharePoint Designer here, you see in my site assets directory, I have two files. I've got one called slider.js, which is the script from the blog, and then I've got the unslider uh, minified jQuery plugin here. So I've, I've got the unslider code library, uploaded to my document library, and then I have slider.js, which is the script from my blog. If we take a closer look at slider.js, uh, you can see that we're loading uh, jQuery referencing SP services, which we use to read the list items. Uh, again, I, I did originally do this with a client side object model, um, but I wanted to keep that compatibility in there for 2007, and because there are people still use that. Crazy as it sounds, people are still using it. Uh, but if you do want the code for the client object model, let me know and, and I can get that to you. So the only thing that you should have to change in this script is if you use a different list structure than I do, you need to specify that here. So here we have a variable called slider list. If your list name is something other than slider, you need to put it in there. Uh, whatever field you use for the slide content, you need to put the name of that field there. And also whatever field you use for your background image, make sure you specify that field. I use the list name slider, the field HTML, and the field picture. All right, And these are the internal field names of the list, not the display names fields of the list. Okay. Good, got it. And the rest is just script that you should not have to touch, unless you want to play around with the styles or whatever, but I'll leave that up to you. So now let's implement the slider. Let's go back to our page, our site in Office 365. Let's go to our site pages library and let's create a page. So I'm going to come in here and do a new web part page. We'll call it slider.aspx. We'll put it into site pages. We'll create that. Here we have our page. So let's add a web part. I'm going to add a media content. And we're going to add a content editor web part. And now we're going to link to our slider.js script. So let's edit the web part. And we shall link, go to our site assets, if I could spell, slash slider.js. We'll go ahead and apply that and stop editing. And here we see the slide. So this is the first slide. Again, it tiles that background image for us. Um, it will change the size of the slide based upon the size of the screen. So if I were to make my screen smaller here and then reload the page, it would make the slide this, it makes the slide a, a minimum of content. So if I make the screen bigger, then reload the page, you'll see it take up, see now it takes up more room. So it will do somewhat resizing. Uh, it's supposed to be a responsive library. I haven't played with it much for that, but if it does, that'd be pretty cool too for your mobile sites. Anyway, that's all there is to it. 
Uh, feel free to play with it. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, if you want uh, more detailed information about the slider or you want to change the way the slider works or its effects, go to the unslider.com website and look through the documentation. Um, and good luck. Thanks.